Uh, my name is Tom Majerski, I'm a colourist and I run a company called Tetragrade, which is currently uh, in partnership with Tracks and Layers. We're based in Media City, we're in this position so that we can offer services direct to companies such as the BBC um, and all the other various production houses within the area. Originally when I started out uh, doing various bits of film work, um, one of the things I wanted to try and do was get the most out of the image uh, just because I didn't have the budget for very expensive cameras. So trying to get the most out of a cheaper camera became a bit of a personal mission of mine. Um, and so along the way it meant that I had to learn lots of various tricks to do in post-production to try and extract the very best image. And typically that's pretty much what we're doing with colour grading, which is we're taking that camera's image and we're trying to get the best out of it. Um, whether that's because the sh filming conditions weren't ideal um, or if the budgets maybe couldn't uh, extend to pay for big lighting rigs or just because um, we've shot on a high-end camera and um, you have to process log footage properly. Um, all those reasons um, meant that um, I was learning lots of various colour grading skills along the way. Um, and then a few years ago, in 2013, I decided to start specialising in the colour grading side of things um, and then set up this business to try and offer those services um, through a boutique facility. You're always going to get the very best results if you speak to a colourist uh, during pre-production. Uh, just because if you're trying to get a, 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 an intended look towards the end of the film, it's important that it's filmed in that way and that you've lit it in that way. Um, and you know that you've dressed your sets in that way and costumes and all these other things that go into it um, and so the very best advice is do speak to a colorist beforehand um, because you can work with them with your DLP or your cinematographer to try and make sure that you've got you know the right uh, filming setup in order to get that intended final look um, and in some instances as well um, in order to assist the filming, we will develop a lookup table which can go straight into the camera to give us a rough idea of what the grade's going to be. And that way, it means on set, everyone has an idea of roughly how the film's going to look before it enters the grade. And then once it does hit that point, we can finesse it and make sure that it looks excellent. So this project that we have up here is for the band Hot Milk, and it's a music video. And the brief with this was they wanted the colours to be quite poppy and quite saturated. Um, but have particular uh, colour signatures. So we've got the oranges and the blues are quite important in this video. Um, and so making sure that that fits in with every, every part of the film, uh, part of the music video is quite critical because we do have a lot of locations where um, we have fairly muted colours in the real world. We've got some overcast sort of rainy shots um, at various points, um, which obviously we have to make sure that we are a little bit more aggressive with the colour grade on those sections. Whereas the other sections where we have you know, lots of fire and things like that, those are naturally orange tones anyway. Um, and so uh, for something like this, working with the DOP, uh, James Oldham, to make sure that um, we know, you know what colour temperature we're going to use on the lights um, and you know, things like that, what filming conditions are going to be okay um, in order to make sure that we can achieve that intended look afterwards. Um, and um, the results here, everyone's really happy with it uh, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out as well. Um, especially shots later on where we're in a vehicle and we've got a really warm up light on the actors in the film. Um, uh, and obviously we've got you know, a nice sort of rainy set here which lends itself well to the blue tones and you know, things like the costume and the makeup especially. This was a big part of this, um, was making sure that the, the white of the makeup of the, uh, you know, the skeletons uh, looked really crisp and clean. Um, and then making sure that you know, all the other elements kind of go into these much more subtle colours. Um, the various considerations like that um, meant that you know, we were able to get this look exactly right. Um, this is a, quite a typical uh, setup that you'll see um, in a, any kind of colour suite. Um, where we have in the middle, we've got our main control surface here. This is the Blackmagic mini control panel. Um, we've got obviously our keyboard and mouse like you'd expect to see. Um, and we have um, a three monitor setup. Um, it's not uncommon to see a two monitor setup, but typically you'll have at least one screen dedicated for the user interface uh, and another screen dedicated to give you an accurate image, so a broadcast reference monitor, basically. Um, and that's, that's a real critical component of uh, a colour suite uh, because you need to make sure that how it's being displayed is absolutely correct. Um, the other section as well is obviously we have uh, some scopes down here um, which give us an objective 
um, perspective on what's happening with the image. Um, and the way I usually describe the setup to clients is this is our subjective um, uh, viewpoint and this is our objective viewpoint. So here we, we could say, you know, maybe the greens are a little bit too yellow or maybe they're a little bit too blue or maybe it's too bright or it's too dark. All these things which, you know, they're opinions at the end of the day. Um, whereas if we look at any of the scopes, we can say objectively, is this too bright? Is it going beyond the limits of the, of the you know, the range? Um, we can look at the vector scope over here and we can say, well, actually, you know, that, that is clearly not quite yellow. It's actually a little bit more towards the green side of things. Um, and so the combination of these two things helps you as a, as a colorist to manage the technical side and the creative side. Um, obviously, we have some speakers because, you know, we need to be able to hear what's going on. Uh, even though we're dealing with image, really, it's quite important that the clients get to get a sense of how their piece is coming together as a whole. Um, so um, the other thing to consider in this sort of space is the colour temperature of the room, which is set to D65, um, which is uh, like a very cool white, is how it's usually described. But actually the reason we have it at that colour temperature is it needs to match the white backlight colour of our reference monitor. It's because the white of the room should be the same as the white of the monitor. Otherwise we'll think that the monitor looks a little bit too blue or maybe a little bit too warm when actually it's correct. So just to make sure our eyes don't start playing tricks on us, we need to make sure that all those things are the same colour temperature. So anybody that wants to get into colour grading, especially if uh, they have just bought like a, you know, a Blackmagic camera that could support RAW or you know, really high quality uh, ProRes or anything like that, anything that basically lends itself to a workflow where people are going to do colour grading, um, one of the key components you really need is a, is a broadcast reference monitor. Um, and you know you can get things that are suitable anywhere from you know seven hundred pounds to you know fifty thousand um, pounds. But fundamentally, what you were going to need is some way to get that clean signal from your PC or Mac into the monitor. And so for that, you do need uh, some form of output card or output device. You can't just plug it straight into the graphics card. Um, so one of the things we use here um, is the uh, Decklink Mini Monitor 4K. Uh, which allows us to send a clean 10-bit signal straight through to the monitor. Um, that's probably the bare minimum because you can do the color grades with just a keyboard and a mouse. Um, it's going to be slower and you're going to have a lot less precision, but it is possible to do these things. Um, and obviously, you know, if you can afford uh, to get hardware scopes like we have over here, obviously, as you can see, there are software scopes as well, which you know, are, are great in that situation. Um, so really, as long as you've got the software, which in this instance is DaVinci Resolve, um, there is a free version of DaVinci Resolve, which is you know, incredibly powerful considering it's free, um, and the full version's not very expensive either, um, then really all you do need is some way of accurately viewing uh, the content itself. Um, the mistake I see often with people just sort of testing the waters of color grading is to assume that their high-end uh, PC or Mac by default produces an accurate image. Um, often, if someone buys a top spec, you know, MacBook Pro or something, and you know, Apple say this is a professional display, uh, it's not quite right in terms of what we need it to do here. Because there's one thing for a monitor to be able to cover, say, all of DCI P3 or all of Rec 709, but it's a very different thing for it to be accurately calibrated. They're not the same thing. Um, so it is important to make sure that you're using a display which is calibrated and that you can send a clean feed to. Uh, so an output device of some kind is very important. Um, and they can be something that plugs into a PCI slot inside your PC, or it could be something that gets sent out via Thunderbolt on a Mac. Um, so you do have plenty of options there depending on whether you prefer PC or Mac. Um, so I'd say those are the key components you really need to get you started. Um, and obviously a decent spec machine as well is quite important too. The great thing about Resolve now is that it's not just a colour grading package. You've got a really powerful uh, non-linear editing section. Uh, you've got uh, Fairlight for audio. You've got Fusion, which is you know, a fantastic bit of software uh, for doing you know, compositing and VFX work. And all this is built right into Resolve. Um, and I think from someone who's maybe just starting from the ground up, one of the great advantages of, of getting into Resolve as a bit of software is that these things are all linked directly together in the same application. 
So you don't have to export to get it from your edit to your color grade or then export again to get it into you know your audio section or even use any kind of you know dynamic link or anything like that. It's it's right there, you just click on the next tab along. Um, and having all that in one package just speeds things up massively. Um, and there are even you know collaborative tools for Resolve where multiple people can be on the exact same project at the exact same time. So you might have you, you know you and a bunch of uh, filmmakers and you've got an editor and a colorist and a sound person and whatnot um, and you can all be in the exact same project and see what each person's doing and it means that everything's sped up and there's no compatibility problems there um, and it just means that everything gets done much quicker and much more efficiently um, and for the you know for the sake of a relatively low license cost um, or even you know the free version which allows these things um, it's just a great one-stop shop for uh, post-production basically um, whether you are doing you know small indie productions or uh, you know YouTube projects or even just quite big projects actually <laughs> most films I think go through resolve um, it's definitely one of the one of the big you know three um, bits of color grading software and I think more and more I see from my clients now people moving to resolve for doing their editing as well um, and their audio um, so it's it's I, there is a bit of a shift going on I think at the moment where people are moving from um, other editing packages, um, whether that's to make my life easier as the colorist, or maybe it's because they want to try and keep things all together. Um, whatever the reason, I think if you are someone who's considering switching from one package to another, I think this is a great one to look into. I, I see color grading as being the icing on the cake, making sure that um, you do get the absolute best from the image means that you know the, the, the film reaches its full potential and you get to uh, partake in um, a part of the process where you get to see the, the kind of film come alive in that regard, the image at least come alive, and um, where you add that final touch of magic to everything. Um, and it's a very, very satisfying part of the process.